On the 72nd hole of the 60th Masters, two men exchanged a public hug and a private word, and then walked off that green to write the final sentences in a remarkable chapter of this storied tournament. Welcome to the 60th Masters. We have our three legendary starters who obviously are warmed up and ready to go. On a cool Thursday morning, 94-year-old Gene Saracen, born the same year as Bobby Jones, began this Masters. The great Byron Nelson followed. And then Sam Snead hit a third drive. Right down the middle. The Masters began in 1934 as a gathering of friends, and is still that today. We all want, we all want to send your distance to rub off. <laughs> On Wednesday, camaraderie is the key to the traditional par three contest. Palmer at the final hole. Four players did make holes in one, a record. Here are three of them. Mark Rowe, Sandy Lott, and Ian Baker Finch. The fourth belonged to Jay Haas, and it tied him with Larry Mize at five under par for the nine holes. Both birdied the first playoff hole. Haas made another birdie on the second. <laughs> Thursday, temperature in the 70s, winds light, good scoring conditions. Raymond Floyd's third shot at the par five, 15th hole. For the seventh straight year, he breaks par in the opening round and shoots 70. One year ago, Phil Mickelson began the Masters with a 66. Today, he's one shot better. Mickelson birdies 11, 13, 14, 15, 17, And 18 for an incoming nine of 30 and a round of 65. While over on the first tee, well, imagine that you're playing your first round at the Masters and you've been paired with Arnold Palmer. That's what happened to George Buddy Marucci. Step on the first tee of Augusta National in the Masters with Arnold Palmer is beyond my wildest expectations. So uh, I couldn't have had a better day. The, the golf was, uh, was not particularly great, but the day was the nicest day I've ever had. Five amateurs are in this master's field, always a part of this tournament's tradition, dating back to Bobby Jones. Buddy, I saw when you walked off 18, you had a big sigh. What was that about? Oh, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's an exciting day. Uh, there's a lot of emotion there, and uh, it still is. So, uh, you know, your first round in the Masters was pretty exciting. That's, that's all it was, really. I just really enjoyed it. Kind of sorry it's over, really. You'd like to go around again if you could. <laughs> Greg Norman parred the first six holes in this Masters and then made birdies at seven, eight, and nine. At 10, he saved par with a difficult downhill bunker shot. Made another par at 11. 
and hit an 8-iron at the flag on the par 3 12. He made that birdie and another at 13. But then pulled his tee shot into the trees at 14. The ball bounced back into the fairway, but left him a blind shot of more than 200 yards to the green. At 15, he was putting for Eagle. But made his fourth birdie in a row. Far at 16. Sandwich to the green at the 400 yard 17th. One shot in the lead. And one shot off the course record held by his best friend, Nick Price. Ten years ago, Nick Price had this putt for a round of 62. On Thursday, Greg Norman had the same putt to match Price's 63. He made nine birdies in the last 12 holes, shot a 33 on the first nine, 30 on the second, tied the course record, and took a two-shot lead. Not a bad day's work. Scott Hoke and Bob Tway shot 67. Lee Jansen a 68. Nick Faldo had four birdies and one bogey in his round of 69. The last time Norman broke 70 to start a Masters was his first tournament in 1981. It's just one of those deals where I came out with a very relaxed and positive frame of mind. I, you know, and I got off to a good start. Even though I made a bunch of pars, I think that's a good solid start around here. I don't think people realize how tough that first five or six or seven holes are around Augusta National. And, and once I got, to, got through those, I started to relax a little bit more. And, uh, you know, I, I hit a lot of good shots. That's all I can say. And I capitalized with my partner. Greg Norman fired 63 shots heard round the world. The Masters is heard and seen on six continents in 138 countries and 375 million households. Norman is really in the middle of the day. He has a fine eagle opportunity, and then he goes on. Ja, vi har været, hvad de kalder at vende McAllister og Bobby Jones. Vi ser her i billedet den opslag fra Payne Stewart. The Germans like Payne Stewart's homage to Bobby Jones. Vi har været ikke med livet siden med kravatte, altså med kni, knikkerbakkerose. Altså, det er alles ganz chance sig den opslag. The first of four days of worldwide television coverage was done. Greg Norman went home to prepare for round two. On Friday, Corey Pavin, six under par on his round, faced this difficult chip at 16. He shot 66, 
which turned out to be the low round on a mild but somewhat windy day. Passing through the exhibit area inside the main public entrance, patrons were reminded of a 20th anniversary Masters, the last time one man went wire to wire to win the green jacket. Go in the hole. Get in there, baby. It was Raymond Floyd who put a five wood in his bag that week just to attack the par fives, which he played in 14 under par. Fine, fondest of memories, uh, I guess the five wood. Having a golf club that really uh, worked so well on the par fives, uh, and that of course playing the par five so many under, uh, I think was directly responsible for the win. His score of 271 put his name on this trophy and tied Jack Nicholas's record. Does he think we'll see another 17 under par? Uh, no, <laughs> we're not gonna see that equal for a while with the bent greens, uh, they're much quicker than they were years back. On the practice range, Greg Norman is getting ready for his 2.45 p.m. tee time. Winds are gusting to 18 miles per hour in the late afternoon. But Norman hits a precision third shot at the par five second. and is a record 10 under par for his first 20 holes. But a new challenger begins to emerge. Two-time Masters winner, Nick Faldo. And with the birdie at 10, he trails Norman by four shots. Even par on his round, Norman plays an eight iron to the 455 yard 11th. But while the shot is on target, it's on the wrong side of the hole. I had a putt on 11 today that may be the quickest putt I'll ever, ever have in my entire life. took the putter back, maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and just tapped the ball. And, and uh, you know, I guess everybody else could say the same thing. I, anybody above the hole there was difficult. He made the comeback putt for par. But the golf course had demonstrated that under master's conditions, there was virtually no margin for mistakes. Baldo for birdie at 13. Now, three shots back. Norman at 12. The hole cut in a difficult right side position. The wind's swirling. He is lucky it stays out of Ray's Creek, catching in the longer grass inside the hazard line. He saves par. At 18, Nick Price makes a birdie. He's not in contention, but what this putt does is lower the cut line to plus two, and that knocks Tom Watson out of the tournament after a record streak of making a cut 21 times in a row. Nick Faldo is over the green in two at the par five, 15th. Norman with the four iron second at the par five, 13th. Baldo for birdie at 15. 
He's now two shots behind. But Norman two putts for birdie at 13. And restores the lead to three. Is everybody all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to ruin your picnic here. <laughs> at 15, an adventure for Bob Tway, who was among the leaders on Thursday. His second shot is in the gallery. Who's this? <laughs> At 18, David Frost is moving up the leaderboard. This shot sets up a birdie and a round of 68. At 17, Lee Jansen. He shoots 71 and is five under for two days. At 18, Faldo hits a wedge. Norman, bunkered at 15, has this side hill putt for birdie. Faldo answers at 18. After a bogey at number one, he made six birdies for a round of 67, eight under for the tournament. There were two memorable shots to close the day at the 18th hole. Bob Tway, last seen on his way to a bogey at 15, made this roller coaster putt for birdie. And the round of 72. Phil Mickelson in trouble off the tee. Hit a hook five iron, very similar to the shot Greg Norman played at 14 the day before. He made his birdie, but shot 73. Greg Norman finished the day with a birdie for a 69. His fifth straight Masters round in the 60s, a record, and a four-shot lead over Nick Faldo in second place. Greg's going really well, and I'm just, we're all trying to catch him, so I'm pleased that, you know, I'm very pleased with today. I've you know, moved up a lot of ground, so that was a good day. I mean, I, uh, I uh, made a lot, a lot of good putts today. You seem to be playing in a fairly good zone. Well, I, I'm enjoying it. You know, I, it just that's all I'm doing. I'm playing well. I, I'm enjoying the moment. Uh, you know, you just go out there and uh, because I enjoy this place. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the weekend tr tremendously. So uh, I've had two good rounds. Hopefully, I'll have two more good rounds. Norman's total of 12 under par is one shot off the tournament record set by Ray Floyd in 1976. But Faldo is off to his best start ever as well. 19 rookies began this year's Masters. Scott McCarran is at the head of the class. He qualified by winning his first PGA Tour event just three weeks before this Masters. Oh, it's been tremendous. I mean, it's been an absolute dream come true to play here at Augusta. Um, I thought about playing at Augusta since I was a little kid, and I always vowed I'd never go to Augusta until I was actually playing. So to be here and be able to walk these fairways, uh, it's just been a dream come true. He uses the unorthodox long putter, but it's working. Only four rookies made the cut, but this one is living the dream of being in contention. You know, I hope I don't wake up. Uh, I, I'm just having fun, 
All my family's here. Um, we rented a big house for everybody to stay, and we're just having a great time. So I'm going to go out there and, and do what I do every weekend and, and go out there and play good golf and play to win. Um, Greg Norman's playing some super golf, and he's going to be very tough to catch. He's probably the best player in the world right now, and he's playing great golf. So, um, you know, I don't really feel there's a lot of pressure, like, oh, my gosh, you're right near the lead. You know, I'm probably eight shots out of the lead right now. So um, I'm going to go out there and have a great time, enjoy it, and smile a lot to the gallery. A man who's been smiling to galleries for 42 years at Augusta did not make the cut, but his final shot in this Masters brought a smile to everyone's face. Birdie at 18 for Arnold Palmer. The biggest change at the Augusta National this year the tributary of Ray's Creek, which winds in front of the 13th green, has been restored to its original design, once again creating the possibility that a golfer might be able to play a ball out of the creek, should the approach come up short. Up near the 13th tee, early on Saturday, is the holder of the player badge number one, Ben Crenshaw, with Masters Chairman Jack Stevens. Badge number one always goes to the defending champion, and even though he's missed the cut, his presence remains very much a part of this tournament, part of the Masters tradition, as he and the chairman view third round play out near the Byron Nelson Bridge. Craig Stadler at 16. A shot perfectly fit to the contours of this green. At 15, well, 10 years ago, Jack Nichols eagled this hole in the final round to win his sixth green jacket. Today, there's an echo of that victory. Nicholas shoots 76 and is three over after this round. Greg Norman and Nick Faldor are paired today and through seven holes, both have lost two shots to par. At the par 5 eighth, Norman's third. It sets up his first birdie of the day. Aldo with a downhill birdie putt at nine. At the 12th tee, Norman still has a four-shot lead. But his eight iron gets caught in the wind and drops into Ray's Creek. An opportunity for Faldo, but his tee shot with a seven iron has gone over the green. Norman pitches to 10 feet. And makes a bogey that must feel more like a birdie, especially when Faldo misses his own putt for par. A tee shot in the water, but a half of the hole. At 15, a one putt birdie for Norman. As Faldo, three putts for par. And the lead is now five. 16. Norman with the nine iron to the front right flag stick. From where he makes birdie, while Faldo has this for par. 
falling seven shots back. At 17, with Norman's approach already close to the hole, Faldo hits wedge. And puts it inside Norman's ball. And when Greg misses his putt, Faldo gains a stroke back. A 73 on a tough day. Had a lot of chances on the back line. Had a chance on, you know, say, par on 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Finally made one on 17. So really, it was, you know, I could have saved the day if I'd been. But I, hit, I thought I hit some good par. I, I just, you know, it's the way it goes. Tougher, tougher to read them some days. You know, some days you look at them and you pick the spot and you hit it. And it goes. And other days you pick a spot and it ain't right. You had to be very precise with your iron play, and he, you could even hit good shots like uh, I did into 12 today and end up in the water. So uh, yeah, it was just a tough day where you just had to grind at it and uh, and just be as patient as you possibly, probably more patient today than you could ever possibly be. Not since Ray Floyd led Jack Nicklaus by eight strokes in 1976 has anyone had this large a lead heading into the final round of the Masters. But Norman does not want to think about that. I'm just going to go out tomorrow as if we're all on the same number. You know, you really can't think about a lead. You just got to play each shot as you come to, and hopefully you play a good round, and, and it'll be good enough. And uh, that's all you can do. You really, that's it's the only way you can approach something like that. Oh, yeah, you never know. I mean, around here, if I go and play a really good, I'm going to go and play a great round, and with the heat on, anything's possible. Day's End finds Norman on the practice green. Sharpening his stroke with 18 holes to play. What goes through a man's mind on a Master's Sunday? Does he think about the past? Does he think about what might have been? goes through a man's mind. He's battling a lot of demons right now. There's no question that all uh, leaders after the third round, they, you have to battle those demons. Uh, he has said many, many times, this is the one that he wants more than any, and uh, he's prepared. His mind looks very strong, and uh, uh, we'll see today. People arrive early at Augusta National to get a good seat, like one at 16, for the shot of the day from Raymond Floyd. Masters hole in one. And at age 53, he finishes tied for 25th. On the first tee, the two men in the final pairing of the day shook hands. And then Greg Norman pulled his opening tee shot far left. And bogeyed the first hole to Faldo's par. At the par five second, Norman was over the green in two.
but Faldo matched him. With a bunker shot that set up a birdie of his own. Both players parred the third hole. Then Norman hit a four iron at the long fourth. And was stunned when it came up two feet short in the bunker and led to another bogey. But then Faldo put his approach in a bunker at five. And missed the putt for par. And so Greg Norman had a five shot lead with 13 holes to play. Incredibly, Nick Faldo would gain 10 shots in those final holes. And it all began with this tee shot at six. Norman made par. Faldo birdied and was now four strokes behind. At seven, both players had birdie opportunities. Neither converted. <laughs> At eight, after Norman scrambled for par, Faldo made his birdie, and then came a major turning point. With Faldo safely on the green at nine, Norman had 98 yards to a hole placed in the front of that severely sloping green. He hit the shot six feet too short. Faldo putted for birdie. Norman had this left for his par. The old saying is that the Masters begins at the 10th hole on Sunday. As he walked there, Greg Norman still had a two-shot lead. Ahead at 13, New Zealand's Frank Nabilo made his fifth birdie in the last six holes and moved into third place. At 10, Norman missed his seventh green of the day. And then missed his chip. His lead was now one shot, and his peers were taking notice. You get a five or six shot lead, you know, people look at you and think it's over, and it's never over, especially on this course, as everyone knows. But he, the way he plays, I, I would be shocked. If he, if he can get through 12, he's going to win. But first came the 11th hole. where a solid approach left him with this opportunity for birdie. Faldo made his par. Norman did not. They were now tied, and Norman's best friend had these thoughts. 
he's a big man. He knows how to handle it out there, and he's been in worse situations than this before. And um, you know, I just hope that he regroups and goes out there because uh, he wants that green bat jacket as badly, probably more than anyone else wants it. You know, and I think that's uh, that might be working against him right now. Nick Faldo said the 12th hole was like good old match play. He hit a seven iron. He said, it went exactly where I wanted it to go. It put the pressure on him. Norman pushed his tee shot and found Ray's Creek for the second day in a row. In the four days of this Masters, Greg Norman's scores at 12 were 2, 3, 4, and 5. Nick Faldo had his first lead in this Masters and said, now the pressure is on me. As fascinating a duel as you will ever find in a golf tournament, Faldo drove first at the short par five. His drive was to the right, inches off the fairway. Norman, trying to drive to the top of the hill on the right, pushed it into the pine straw. The Sharks' intention was to put his second on the green and pressure on Faldo. But his caddy talked him into laying up. Remember now, it's firm up there, too. That yeah. ground's firm, so it's going to release once it gets out there. Be sure about your shot now. Be sure you want to do it. I don't want to do the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, that, if you think that's the play, let's go for it. 213. 213 to the front. I just think that's the right play, Craig. Get a break. Faldo pulled his five wood. But didn't like the way it looked, resting on the ground behind the ball. Too much of an angle. He also considered laying up, but said his lie was too good and decided on a two iron. In his own words, it was one of the best shots of the week, leaving him two putts for a birdie. Norman's third left a tricky putt from above the hole. Aldo never breaking concentration. Matched. And still led by two with five to play. In the late afternoon, young Phil Mickelson, who had fallen from contention after his opening 65, 
He did a birdie at 15 to move into a tie for third place with Frank Nabilo. Instead, he made eagle and had third place to himself. At 14, Greg Norman had arguably the most difficult putt on the golf course, 70 feet up a five-foot slope. A brilliant effort, and he matched pars with Faldo. Fifteenth hole, Faldo with a four iron from 212 yards. Norman with a six iron from 200. toward the water. But stayed up. Norman's third shot. Thought he'd made it. Go in the hole. Go in the hole. And instead of gaining a stroke he desperately needed, he merely matched birdies after Faldo's chip to three feet. Still a two-shot lead with only three holes to play. Match play. With the flagstick tucked close to the water on the back left portion of the green, Faldo's job was not to make a mistake. Faldo playing near perfect golf since his last bogey back at the fifth hole, Norman had to be aggressive and attack the flagstick. This was the shot that ended the duel in the 60th Masters. Baldo said, who knows what happened? I don't know. At 18, Mickelson to save par and sole possession of third place. A strong showing in only his fourth Masters.
And then, two warriors on tired legs climbed Augusta's last hill to finish this phenomenal story. Greg Norman began the day hoping his last putt would be the last putt in this year's Masters. Instead, it was the next to last. Nick Faldo shot 67 on Sunday, the low round of the day. He hugged his caddy, Fanny Sunison. Remembered to pick up his golf ball. And then turned his attention to Greg Norman. Faldo broke 70 on three of his four rounds under hard, fast, often windy conditions. In his three Masters victories, his final round scores have been 65, 69, and 67. Greg Norman failed again in his quest for a green jacket. The men who have won three green jackets or more, Sam Sneed, Jimmy DeMarc, Gary Player, Jack Nicklaus, Arnold Palmer, and now, Nick Faldo. Nick Faldo won this Masters because he did not make mistakes on a golf course that encourages them. Because he did not let Greg Norman forget him. Because over the final crucial 13 holes, he had ever green, made five birdies, and had legitimate chances for seven more. This Masters was one for the ages.